All right, welcome everybody to the Bird's Eye View. I'm here with uh, Hard Case. Hello. And Mr. Crow. And Mr. Crow. I'm like over here just doing waving. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about, because the anniversary is coming up, uh, September 11th and where we were and uh, what did it change in our lives, if anything. So uh, anybody want to start? I mean, I guess I can start because um, for me it's, obviously a whole different thing me being in the uk um i just started um secondary school which is equivalent to you guys's middle school and um, from what i remember um and yeah it was quite a crazy thing um like it wasn't that we saw anything it was more just a word of mouth from the teachers and then being at home and seeing stuff and it was yeah it was such a crazy thing to imagine that that would happen like because i always thought like when I was older, I was like, I had this dream for a long time of going to America and like one of the places I wanted to go to was the Twin Towers because it was sort of such an amazing thing seeing it in programs and stuff. So it was such an iconic place to go to. And um, yeah, it was so crazy to see and hear things that happen, you know, when you get home and you're watching the news and it's just everywhere and it's just crazy how it all went down. And like, even for not even being in the country, like I felt like just impacted by it like it was just such a shocking moment and so crazy for the times like nothing ever that major had happened so it was just a uh, real like you know like kind of like take life in perspective kind of thing like whoa like you know so it was uh it was crazy times for sure so did, did it change anything for you in your life like did it mm. impact you I... in such a way that you changed something or did like the rules of life change in, in where you live? I don't think much change in the way of life for us here. It, um, I think it was more of an impact of like, for me, I was just kind of thought like, wow, you know, like you kind of always think like something like that is going to last forever. You know, like it's a huge monument, like they've, they've been there forever and now they're not there, you know? So it kind of gives you that perspective of like, wow, things maybe don't last forever, you know, like, and, everything is finite to a point so kind of like maybe you know like start enjoying life a little bit more and like you know don't take the things for granted and get out there and do stuff so it definitely made me feel a bit more like wanting to enjoy my life and move forward and do things and um, I think it really concreted my dream to come out to America and travel and it still is my dream and it's something I will accomplish one day hopefully <laughs> so but yeah, I think, you know, that's about much what it changed for me, but I'm sure it changed a lot more for Americans than it did for us uh, Brits, <laughs> for sure. What about you, Mr. Crow? So I was fairly young in my career. Like I just started my career. Um, I was, I would say I was actually in my first job, you know, so I'm, I'm a young uh, programmer at that time and uh the day that it happened when it was happening i remember i was in a meeting um i can't remember what we were talking about but i remember there was there was quite a few of us there i want to say there was about 10 of us and um someone came into the office and just you know they knocked on the door and they opened it and they're like hey uh we just want to inform you guys that uh there's been they're they're presuming a terrorist attack going on on the towers right now and we all just kind of was like okay like it kind of you know first we were just confused like okay why are you knocking on the door and interrupting to say what like what are you saying <laughs> like we're just like mm. okay like what's going on and um it, it was we kind of just kept talking a little bit but yet you could tell all of us were like wait what what did she just say like what's happening and, and so after about 10 minutes or so um, we just kind of adjourned the meeting and, and walked back out. And at that time, I, I walked back to my office and I, I remember sitting down at the at my desk and I'm like, OK, what's going on the twin, you know, to the towers? And I was Googling it and all of a sudden the news is coming up. And then um, at that time, it, I think it was about a half hour later, like a lot of people around the office uh, just were moving around, scattering. There's just a lot of movement going on. Uh, people were trying to find TVs, listening to the radio. You could hear different radio stations going on. And uh, my wife at that time, well, same wife, but my wife, she was, she started texting, you know, she's like, hey, have you heard what's going on? And at this time, I 
think uh, we had two kids, and one of them was like, my is my oldest boy now. Uh, he was he was like barely months old, pushing things, you know, like barely. I think he might have been crawling at the time. And so she's at home, and she's like, "Have you heard what's going on? Oh my gosh, I can't believe this!" And uh, it just like this sense of urgency all of a sudden started to sit in of like. I, I, I feel like I shouldn't be here right now. You know, like what's going on? Like I I'm confused. Like it just, that was kind of what was happening to me at the moment. And, and that was just that day. And how is, how it has affected me is it, it's hard to think back, you know, like what hard cases was saying too, is like, they've been something iconic for so long. I, I remember playing Spider-Man the game and climbing on these things and <laughs> running around and, now they're not there and going back and seeing some of the old movies where you're like that that's what they are they used to look like that's that's what they were and i definitely don't look at traveling the same anymore like i like airplanes you just you just don't know what to think um it's it's definitely a distant thought in my head but every time you go or at least myself i go through and you, you have to go through all you know taking off your shoes and doing this and that it's it's this reminder of like, look, we, we have to trust, you know, we have to try to neutralize everything. And it's like, this was so long ago and still uh, like it, I'm okay up until that point where I'm like, oh yeah, we got to go through this kind of stuff. Cause this stuff isn't allowed anymore because of what happened way back then. And it's, I don't know. I, I don't want to say it, what, well, what do they say here? Duck, like we'll never forget type thing, but it's something in the back of my head and until somebody says something, I'm like, oh, yes. And everything triggers. And then it's, mm. I, I start remembering things. And it might be a little bit of a fear with a little bit of like, oh, my gosh, what's next? And what do I need to do? And it, it's, I think that's how it's changed my life it is it, I can go through something very, very normal. But then when somebody says something and it reminds me just a little bit, I'm like, I remember all those feelings. I remember the, and it, I don't think sadness hit me until the day after, like it didn't set in of just how much and what had happened until myself, my panic when I was done with work it, it is like, you know, I got things settled in my life and got back to my family to just kind of just reevaluate things and be like, okay, here's where I'm at. Here's what's doing. Here's how it's affected us thinking we're okay. And then waking up the next day and driving into work. And I was like, Oh my gosh, you know, like this is could, what, what's it like for them? What is it like? And then I started thinking about their lives and how it's affected their families. And that's when it really started to hit and sink in, mm -hmm. you know, days later. So I remember I was, uh, in an apartment with my, uh, buddy Chad and, and somebody called me and they were like, I don't even remember who called me, but, it, but, I was getting ready for school that year. Um, I'd got out of the military about a year and a half before I got out in March of 2000. And um, so, you know, they, they're like, hey, turn on the TV. And they just hung up. And I was like, what the fuck? So I get up, turn on the TV, and I'm watching, and I'm like, you know, oh, my God. And then to watch the second plane come in and hit the other tower, it was like, like, what the hell is going on, right? It was like, being attacked on U.S. soil is a little, little bit personal to me. I was like, what the hell? Mm. So <clears throat> I immediately, like, was on the phone with, like, the military. And I was like, hey, where are we go? Where are we going? You know, and they and they were <laughs> like, well, we're not taking prior service right now. And I was like, what do you mean? I, well, if you want it, you know, we'll put you into, you know. And I was like, yeah, bro, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Like put me back in my combat job and, and send me right, and they're and they're like, oh, we just are not taking prior service. So, if it had been a year earlier, that would have been a whole different scenario for me. I would have been right back in the military. Um, but, uh, yeah, that that whole thing was very like you, you get deployed. I mean, I had just come back from Bosnia when I got out of the military. So my last action in the military was deployed to come back out process and then go out of my merry way. It was like, I felt like I needed to be back in and go over there. And then to be told that, yeah, we're not taking prior service right now. was like, really? 
Like, all you got to do is just dress me up and send me, bro. You, know, you don't got <laughs> to go through all the training, yeah. you know? I'm like, whatever. But, yeah, I don't know. Um, it was a very, like, personal thing to me. And I know I lost a lot of people that I knew that went over in uh, combat situations after that. Um, so mm. that was kind of the start of this whole change of military stance and things and i guess part of what bothers me now is the current situation we're in with um basically <clears throat> not remembering the lessons of 9 11 to where they're just like oh we're done with that war we're just pulled everybody out i'm sorry if we left you there but uh we just needed to to, to pull out and 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 all the blood, the sacrifice, and the loss of life that occurred in that 20 years to now just wash your hands of it and say, oh, we're done, and forget the reason we were there in the first place was to prevent stuff like this happening again. Um, yeah. it's, it's a little harder to swallow now. Um, like, it, I, it honestly feels like September 11th to me was just a few months ago again instead of it had got put behind me and over it. Now that stuff is dredged yeah. all back up again and it's just it's um, I I very fearful that we're looking towards something similar all over again. That makes mm. me very makes me very sad about that. Because yeah. so, wasn't yeah. it with um, the way, same with the Twin Towers that got attacked, wasn't it? The Pentagon got attacked at the same time, wasn't it? A plane yes. kind of so, crashed into to it a little bit. Right. Something. Well, there was actually uh, four planes. Mm. Um, one hit the first tower. One hit the second tower. One was... There's a few theories about the one that was at the Pentagon. Uh, mm. Theories of... Not your conspiracy theories, because some yeah. conspiracy oh, theories yeah. were <laughs> whatever anti-aircraft stuff at the Pentagon brought the plane down enough so it didn't land on top of the Pentagon and more of just hit the ground and then ran into the Pentagon. Yeah, yeah. Another theory is the people on the plane were fighting with the terrorist on the plane, and that's why it crashed before it hit the target. Oh, right, yeah. That's another theory. Mm. Um... Other theory is the guy just wasn't a very good pilot and missed. I don't know. Like, either way, uh, there was significant damage to the Pentagon uh, mm. when this happened. And they, there was a lot of people in... Well, luckily, the area that it hit was due to renovation. So there wasn't a significant amount of people in that particular area. But there was still a significant amount of people in the Pentagon at the time. Yeah. And... A lot of those people stayed on the job to do their job because this was an attack and they were there um, to make sure that that communications weren't disrupted, uh, that information was still flowing to the people that needed it so U.S. could react as necessary. Um, so mm. my, my hat's off to them or continuing yeah, to do their duty in in such a dire situation with uh, a massive loss of life all over the place. And then the fourth plane was brought down in Pennsylvania, crashed in a... I think it just crashed in a field. It was just in a field or something. And, yeah. and the, I think all the right, theory wow. there was the, um, was the passengers retaliated and, and brought that plane down before it could uh, 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 hit something. Because... I, I don't know that they really I don't know that they ever really found out where that plane was going. So yeah. uh, I don't know what would have been the next target on that one. Yeah, yeah, I don't I never actually heard about that one, the fourth one crashing in Pennsylvania. That's uh, quite new to me. I never really heard of that. Because I would have been. Because yeah, I'll tell you right now, after being in the military and stuff, and <clears throat> and heaven forbid you try to hijack. A plane I'm on with a box knife, because that's what they had. They had box knives. They didn't have they guns. Had box knife. No, it was. All oh, right. Uh, wow. Okay. I'd have been like, all right, somebody give me a big pen, and then I've been all, all right. Brent, come on, bring your box knife on. I mean, 
<laughs> this, this ain't <laughs> happening, bro. This, it's your yeah. time. But, I, you know, I don't, like, a lot of, there's a lot of stories and, like, Nobody was on the plane. Nobody lived that was on the plane. So nobody knows exactly what was happening, right? Mm. And, and But the prevailing theory is most people didn't know. Most people didn't know what was going on until the cockpit had already been secured by the terrorists. Yeah. All and right, then wow. the terrorists basically kind of came back and said, hey, you were hijacked. And that was like kind of the prevailing theory where... Mm. Where there was really, there wasn't a struggle or anything. It was, it was, hey, uh, Captain, you know, can we talk to you for a second? Because there was no locked doors or anything beforehand. That wasn't. All oh, right, wow. Now there, now there's major, you know, a secure door separating the cockpit, mm. and that wasn't the case before. These were, <laughs> these were things put in later as uh, after lessons were learned the hard way. Not to mention on, um, I don't know what percentage, but on a lot of flights now, uh, well, there used to be, I don't know what, what the current thing is now, but there used to be an armed, um, I forgot what they're called, an armed officer, federal officer on the flight. Air marshal? Yeah, an air an marshal, that's right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. The, there used to be lots of them, like, for a long time, I thought it was like on every flight, but now mm. I, I, it's probably a percentage of flight, an armed air marshal. Because, and the reason I say that is because there's a lot of passengers getting duct taped by stewardess and stuff to, uh, on, you know, and I, and I don't see anything about an air marshal stepped in in any of this stuff, right? Mm. So now I don't mm. know how many air marshals there really are out there. Um, but before when I was flying around, I know I, I, know that i've seen several of them <laughs> um but now i don't know how many are on there because i i would think that they would get involved in situations where an unruly passenger was having to be duct taped to a seat by a stewardess i i think that they would get up and do but i don't know maybe not maybe they're like oh it's not a terrorist problem so i'm not getting up and exposing myself but it just seems odd i don't know but yeah, um very strange I like, just looked it up, and that is actually a number one question. Are there air marshals on every flight? And the answer is, <laughs> there are not enough air marshals to cover every flight. So their assignments mm -hmm. are kept secret. No one knows which passengers is the air, mas air marshal. But, <laughs> but, I, but I know after September 11th, there was tons of them at one point. Oh, yeah. yeah Either that or imagine, they were just yeah. stepping on from flight to flight to flight to flight, and that's all <laughs> they did all day. I don't know. but Because I, I, I know for a fact having seen armed folks and having seen certain people on, I know for a fact that I've seen several. Hmm. So, but, but lately, I mean, I haven't flown lately, but, but because of COVID and stuff, but when I was flying before, like it felt like maybe there wasn't as many on there. Now. But, but here's the other thing too, is when was the last time you heard an air marshal got involved in any of these airplane disputes that have happened? There's been a lot of them. Hmm. Uh I've not heard of many actually who ever yeah. get involved. Yeah, I can't even tell you that the last time I actually heard of an air marshal stepping into anything lately in the last few years. But there's been a hell of a lot of incidents on airplanes, airplanes getting turned around and all and people getting duct taped, people getting beat up and thrown down and oh and, yeah. and passengers mm. sitting on top of people, unruly people, you know, like I don't know. It just feels like we're maybe not as secure as we were. And for me, having worked in the government, like I remember right after September 11th, it was um, everybody was sharing information across the board. Like, because that was one of the breakdowns, right? Is this person knew one thing, this person knew one thing, this person knew one thing, but none of them talked to each other, so nobody knew the whole picture. Yeah. And, and then there was supposed to be this huge thing in the government where all government branches were supposed to talk to each other and you know provide information and stuff and and i don't see that now i don't like we've gone back the other way where like yeah we don't share information with anybody so, yeah mm. I don't i've know. actually thought that same thing is it seems like a lot of the communication is a little bit scattered it's not commun. it's not full if you will. yeah nobody has the big yeah. picture yeah, it's like they're almost reverting back to how it used to be. Like the panic was there when something major like that happened. It's like, oh, everyone collaborating. 
like well, share all the information but now it's died down everyone's just gone oh we'll just go back to our own little places and, and that, do our and own that, thing kind of thing and that's so. really the scary thing it's been 20 mm. years and i yeah. feel like we're already reverting back and forgetting mm-hmm. um, all the lessons that we learned the hard way that people lost their like lots of people lost their lives in that whole thing mm. And then lots of people lost their lives after that in the action yep. to make sure that that never happened again. Yeah. yeah. And then now it seems like that's just been washed away. And I don't know, that's a hard pill to swallow for me personally. Yeah, yeah. it must be 100%. Um, like, I don't know. So has life changed for me? Like, it, it could have changed in a major way if it had happened a year earlier or I left the military a year later. Because I, I would have probably spent the whole full, full time in the military at that point instead of just my my initial service agreement. Um, but like I don't like I don't like to fly. I don't. I would rather drive. I don't like the whole scenario around flying. Um, I participated in the uh, in the um, programs where. People go to airports to see if the airport checkers can catch you, can oh, prof- yeah. can correctly profile you and stuff. Right? Yeah. Um, I participated in that, and I'm not I'm not a hundred percent pure believer in uh, we do enough to catch everything. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah, for me, it's a, it's an interesting one for flying because um, I've never been on a plane ever in my entire life. So very interesting um, perspective for me because like it, all seeing all these things happen and different things with planes and stuff, like it does put a bit of fear in me to be like, oh, you know, a bit worried whether I should be going on a plane or not. But I know I want to do it because it is an experience that everyone should experience at least once. But, so, um, so to ease your fears, flying is mm. one of the safest ways to mm. travel period yeah oh yeah yeah mm-hmm. it for me it's the whole thing wrapped around flying mm. the yeah definitely the is your bag exactly under the 35 pounds and you gotta weigh it and, <laughs> you know and and then you gotta get your ticket and then you know you gotta go through all the security things which i actually don't mind doing the security part of it and then you sit away and you wait yeah. around and then they board you by rows, but there's all these people rushing forward. And then, and then if you just wait your turn, like there's no place to put your own bag above your seat because some asshole brought like twelve bags, and it's all like <laughs> that whole thing, dude. I just that whole thing is just not not for me. And then when you're on the plane, like, oh my god, dude, I've seen people bare Pure feet sardine. sticking their feet up oh, and yeah. like people bumping your chair and i don't have the personality for that kind of stuff like <laughs> I, I don't like like don't invade my space and you're fine you invade my space and i'm not one to just eat it for the next four hours of this flight and just stew about it that's not me and so i like i yeah i just the whole thing <laughs> for me about flying is is just an experience i'd rather do without I, i'm not scared to fly it's just the experience of flying for me I, I just not a fan yeah. of I just not for me at all. <laughs> I had a job where we flew into a town, we'd set up for a we'd set up a like an exhibit type thing where we just did a show and then we'd tear down that night and the next morning, you know, it's like we're flying out to the next place and at four, five AM, you know, something like that. And so there was this time where I was traveling just every other day we we're on a plane. Mm-hmm. And it's you get tired. And I remember getting on this plane. I think we're in Chicago is where it was. And I think I was going to Minnesota or something like that, just somewhere around there. And I get on the plane. I'm excited. I sit in my seat and I'm like, oh, good. I can just sit back and go to sleep and catch some sleep, you know, catch some Z's. And this guy sits down next to me. He's like, well, how are you doing today, sir? And I was like, I'm fine. He's like, Mm -hmm. I am so excited to fly. This is my first flight. Let me tell you all about this and how excited I am. And I'm like, (laughs) 
please don't talk to me. I just wanted to sleep. I got an hour and a half of sleep last night. I just need a little bit more sleep. And this guy just goes off on it like, this is so cool. And then he grabs my leg a couple times like, I'm so sorry. I'm just a little nervous. And I'm like, please stop talking to me. Let me go to sleep. <laughs> And I can't sleep very well on planes, but man, there was these times where you just, there was nothing else I could do. I couldn't stay awake, but remember, this guy kept me awake. <laughs> I remember the very first time I flew, I was about 20 years old and I was flying from Oregon to Oklahoma for basic training. Okay. And, uh, That's a long flight. And so we're on the plane and I'm on the window seat and I'm like, you know, okay, you know, brave face on and we're flying and I'm like, okay, it's not. <laughs> And then, like, like we're taking, like, you can see the plane shaking. I'm like, <laughs> I thought they were maybe a little sturdier than this. I'm like, okay, you know. And then, and then I was like, these are flimsy. And then, and then, like, like we come down and we land, and it was kind of like a wobbly, right? And then, like, the top of the engine goes whoosh, whoosh, right. And I was like, oh. I was like, what the fuck, you know? Because <laughs> <laughs> so, so what it what it was? It was like the engine cowling, right? The top came off. And it goes back like that. So the jet like goes up instead of back, I guess, or something like that. But it like, I was like, whoa, what the fuck? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> the, the guy's like, no, I was supposed to do that. I was like, okay, okay. I'm like, I'm I'm do that. That. I was like, check, please let me off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So now, now when I fly, I have a way of flying is, is I stay up. The night before, and then <laughs> he's whenever, passed out when he yeah, gets on the plane. Whenever the flight gets on, I get on the flight. I sit down. I put my headset down. Put my hoodie up, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm not "Nice, fucking out, dude, out." People, he's got like, like, give me my Z's, give like, me my sleeping pills. People like <laughs> yeah. straddling over me to get out to go to the bathroom because they can't wake me up. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And, and to me, the, the other reason I do that is because it helps me with jet lag. So whenever mm. I get to where I'm going, I, I'm so tired. Yeah. I just go to bed at the time that I'm supposed to go to bed. And then I can yep. just sleep. Nice. Yeah. And then I'm a little bit tired the next day. And then by then by that, that next night, though, I'm good to go. So that's yeah. how I combat my, my jet lag also. But yeah, I don't <laughs> like the whole experience. So I'm like, I'm like, I'm on the plane. I'm buckled in. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> My only thing is I hate sitting next to the wing and being by the window. Because I've been I've been by it where I see that wing and it just flaps. Yeah, flapping around. I don't like that. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that thing's gonna snap <laughs> off in a moment. <laughs> I, I don't like that. I generally sit on the aisle. Okay. Of I think if I'm my first flight, I think I might go for a window seat. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. I'm terrified of heights and stuff, but I think it would be an experience to be able to see everything for the oh, first yeah. time. Even yeah. though, annoyingly, obviously, I sorted out my passport to be able to go um, traveling and start traveling, and then COVID happened. Yeah. When I was oh, like, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess I've got to wait a couple of years now. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I would say like the, best, the best place to sit is right in front of the wing if you can. Yeah. Okay. In front but, of the wing by the window. Yeah, but don't sit like try not to if you if you want to look out, try not to sit on the wing because then you can't see no. anything below, right? You want to sit either in the back yeah. or in. but sit in the All back. Right, okay. I don't know. I seem like sitting in the back sucks, but uh, <laughs> seems like it's a lot more traffic is all I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm always trying to sleep, so <laughs> Most of the, bathroom, yeah. the bathroom's typically no, in the back. Where I remember this one time, dude, I was passed out. And apparently the two ladies on the inside had like straddled across me and got out, right? But the damn food cart from the stewardess oh. was wham right into my knee. That woke me up, dude. I was, I was like out of a dead ass <laughs> fucking passed out sleep. It was like, I was like, what the fuck happened? Because <laughs> they were like, oh, you woke up. And they were laughing about it. I was like, God, I'm dude. <laughs> I remember having to stand up and hobble around for a few minutes. Like, God. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> well, wasn't going back to sleep then. I was always worried about the damn cart coming by. <laughs> yeah, those the trays on there. Like I've I've had to try to work on those flights before where you're trying to type on a little laptop and I'm like, nope, I never realized that I like to spread my 
my arms a little bit as I type. <laughs> I like to spread my wings when I type, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> but yeah, it's... So it used to be small. when I first started flying around, every single seat had a TV. Or they had like a pop-down TV. Yeah, and then now... They have TVs right in front. Now, um... Now, sometimes I remember being on planes that don't have them at all. They they hand, <laughs> they they give you these little handheld tablets if you want to rent one. It oh, really? Kind of, yeah, oh, okay. that's kind of how they were doing it. So, yeah, I've so, always had a TV right in front of me. Yeah, so 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 uh, I don't know. Got any more about it, about it, September 11th or anything? Flying, mm -hmm. traveling. Thanks for everyone. If you're watching this, if you served in any any way. Including you, Duck. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for everything. But, so uh, that's all I got. So on top of that is on this anniversary, 20 years. Uh, if you're struggling with stuff, make sure you talk to somebody and contact somebody. Mental health is always a, a huge, huge issue and needs to be addressed. Um, so with that coming up and with everything else going on, and then with COVID, uh, if you're you know you feel like you need to talk to somebody definitely please reach out to somebody your neighbors your friends definitely. the hotlines or something just make sure you take care of yourself um 100 with that don't ever uh, feel like you're alone in it you you're never alone there's always somebody out there that's going to be there to help you and you i i deal with mental issues myself so i feel it i know it 100 percent. so you know don't ever feel like you're alone on that one just you know reach out to somebody anybody it doesn't matter who it is they'll be there for you so so go ahead and leave a comment where were you on september 11th mm -hmm. and, and uh did that impact and how did that impact your life we'd like to hear those comments uh go ahead and leave a like and uh help us with the algorithm but with that we're gonna oh, get yeah. out of here so much love all we'll catch you next time take yeah, care everyone. all bye